Good morning. So before we get started, I want to let you all know that we are going to do something that we hope is kind of cool, but is kind of new. So I want you, I know you've heard these words before, but get out your phones um, and make sure that you are on the Wi-Fi. It's Humanity Tech, Humanity Tech. Um, humanity Tech being the Wi-Fi, the other Humanity Tech being the password, no caps. So before we get started, I want to ask, what is this film? So Pocket is a 17 minute short film and it is the year, it is one year in the life of a high school sophomore, all told from the perspective of his iPhone. And I think um, the idea is that the setting of our film is the character's phone. Uh, as you'll see in the excerpt that you guys are about to take a look at, essentially it's a very presence driven viewing experience in which the character's phone takes over your own. Did you add something? I just wanted to add also uh, to get your headphones out. This is what the headphones are for. And if you don't have headphones, and uh, I know we have some loner headphones here as well. Okay, so we're going to get our phones out and get ready because the cool thing that we're going to do is actually stream this small excerpt of the film on your own phones as it was meant to be seen. So have a little patience with us. I think this is probably one of the first times we've done it for an audience this large. Um, and we are going to have some directions on how to do that. Absolutely. So there's going to be a link on the screen that's coming up soon. It's right there. It's bit.ly slash a pocket. And oh, can you hear me? I think I'm in here. Uh, so you guys, if you enter this in to your browser, you'll be automatically taken to our live stream uh, of the film. It's going to be streamed to your devices almost simultaneously within a few seconds this is sort of the collective voyeuristic experience of watching something uh together but uh, uh on your individual devices so zach once, and i are going to do it too once you get onto the page uh you may enter the stream automatically make sure you go into full screen mode so that this the screen takes over your own there should be sort of a the humanity tech logo as a little screensaver. If you have that, then you've entered the stream properly. You may have to press the play button if you're not there already. What you should be seeing is, I'm just loading it on my phone now. One moment. If it's working for folks, give me a thumbs up. If it's yeah. not, okay. Great. That's the one. Yes, sir. Let me see it on yours. They said they would have it down there. Okay, great. If you look to the TV screens here, that's what you all should be seeing. Can I get a show of hands as to who has that on their screen right now? Great. We're, get, we're getting close. We're getting close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can we get the can we get the link back on the screen? And if we could get that on the, our monitor here too, that'd be great. Password but, is Humanity Tech for, for those the, for the Wi-Fi. Yeah, who need that? Bit Ly. Can you do it on your phone, Juzek? Excellent. Okay, we should be getting close. Quick show of hands, who has it uh, ready to go now? Is anybody, let's see, yeah, show of hands, be ready to go? Okay. Great. And would you give us, uh, give us a wave if you're having any technical trouble? We can quickly problem solve here. Okay. Yeah, the, the Wi-Fi password is Humanity Tech, same Which as the, the network same as name. the network. One word, Humanity Tech. It doesn't seem to be working. Um, it should resolve to Vimeo. Do you have a girlfriend? Oh, that's an important note. Why is it starting right now? Mom, please don't tag Got me it. in anything. Thank you. Thank you. For some of you, I it should have begun.
vertical. Yeah. If anyone's having trouble, we can talk through kind of what you're seeing on the screen right before we begin the panel. No cost. I think for the sake yeah. of uh, expediency here, if you all aren't getting the link to work, just take a look to what you're seeing on screen and, and you, we'll, yeah. Atlantic is sending a full link to the film afterward. This is just an excerpt, so. Yeah, and we will have. talk a little bit about the clip that you're seeing now. All right, so I know that worked for some of you because I saw some of you laughing and giggling as you watched. Um, for those of you who couldn't hear, that was a very short excerpt, and even from kind of the screenshots, you can see the idea of the film, and you guys should correct me if I'm wrong, is to give you the sense of the life of a teenager as told through one of the pieces of technology that they use the most. So you could see Instagram, you could see text, you could see kind of the selfie style videos, and it's a year in the life. So I wanted to ask why choose to do it this way as kind of this very specific mobile first delivery? Well, I think um, going back to your sort of summary of what the film is, it's, it's a year in, in the life of an American teenager. And these days, sort of the uh, part of the theme of the film that this is just such a large portion of how teenagers are spending their time as we all are, are living in the digital world. Uh, Mishka and I are, are filmmakers, and a part of our work now has involved us becoming technologists. But essentially, in movies, we've seen this sort of discrepancy where the amount of time we spend in the digital world hasn't been reflected in the stories that we're seeing on screen. So this was our attempt to sort of correct course and tell a story uh, that, that involves the real experiences that we're all having. Yeah. I'm interested, can you guys delve a little deeper into that idea that technology isn't really represented in media in the way that's actually used in our lives. How do you think it is represented and kind of what is the fullness of that that we're missing? Well, I think when you think about a conventional film, you know, you have a camera that's separate and it's kind of this third party that you're supposed to pretend is not there. And the only way to really represent what's happening on a screen is really to either film a screen or to have some sort of floating text, you know, House of Cards-esque graphics. But that doesn't really represent the experience of being there and watching, watching a text come in, FaceTiming with a friend, interacting with social media. And for us, we wanted to place viewers in exactly the space that they're already spending all this time. Because people are spending more and more time in their devices. And the things that cause drama in our lives, it's waiting on that text, it's on an important phone call, it's seeing something that is upsetting or seeing something that makes you really happy online. And yet these highs and lows and these kind of real life dramas that we're all living are not, not kind of conventionally interesting to watch if they're filmed in a conventional way. We kind of needed to rewrite the language and create our own language to kind of tell stories in that space. I think with Pocket, with this project in particular, the medium sort of is the message. Um, Mace plays our 15-year-old character, Jake Tilner, who we're examining his relationship to his phone, as well as the relationship he has in his lives that are told through his phone, he experiences through his phone. Um, and I think that w what we're seeing is that right now, storytelling, what's emotional and what's effective, 
Instagram and Snapchat and texting, these are the sort of things that we're all experiencing, the relationships, the moments of self-discovery and stuff in our lives. So this project in particular was our attempt to examine that and cultivate that relationship on screen. Nice, you're the star yeah. of the show. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I mean, honestly, I'm 15. I'm way younger than you guys. And listen, every time, <laughs> listen, every time old, old people, no offense, there's nothing wrong with, you know, getting older. I, I'll, I'll be, you know, 80 years old <laughs> soon enough. But, you know, every time, um, like, older people try to capture this generation, it never works out, you know. Um, or it does, but not so accurate. And, you know, I've known these guys for seven, eight years, like, to the since the beginning of my acting career. And I really think this film exemplifies my generation and it captures it really accurately. I mean, when the first, um, when the movie first released, um, it really just, I was really amazed at how it tied in. Um, like my, my parents understood it and also kids my age and younger were like, wow, like you really captured it well. Like this film was amazing, which, really meant a lot to me because like it worked <laughs> but y you know i'm just really proud of this project and how it really captured my generation and also my my um all of my friends especially a lot of girls were talking about you know um how sexting can affect their lives and you know how how you can get exposed or the dangers of social media as well they're like i'm really glad your film pointed this out and it really showed not just, oh, um, you know, cute text your boyfriend or your girlfriend. No, like the things that can go wrong. And if you watch the film, um, you can see some of the um, social things that can happen that can go a little more like south. If you watch the film, I'm not going to like spoil it for you guys. But um, that this film really captures that, which I'm really proud of, because honestly, like I feel like all of us wanted to really send a message, you know, and just really give a footprint and a stance for uh, the younger and the older generation so they can like connect. I just want to give a little context for those of you who maybe couldn't hear. There is a portion of the film, and this is not a spoiler, where Jake is talking to the girl that you could see he has a crush on, Farah, and ends up asking her for some pictures. And I thought that was a really, really important point as well. And I think this is something that for people who know teenagers or know younger people who are on their phones, certainly for parents, is a real area of concern. What are the dangerous or potentially like vulnerable things that teenagers and kids are doing on their phones, kind of in a level of privacy that we can't tell that could actually be really, really harmful for them? And what is the line between letting them have a level of privacy and wanting to protect them? And how do you do that when they have the internet at their fingertips at all times? So I want to ask you two, what made you kind of want to get into that? That's obviously a very sensitive and fraught topic, and it's pretty complex. I think for us, we really wanted to tell a story about what it means to come of age in the digital age. And what does it mean to basically grow up and learn these really important early lessons when you have a developing sexuality, you have a developing sense of self? And what does that look like when you can interact with all of your classmates online digitally? You bring your classmates home with you. It's a completely different context. And I think we were reading a lot of articles about how the norm is often sexting is coming before uh, young kids are kissing. This is like a very normal pattern right now among young kids, and I think you see some of that in eighth grade and some other sides of, in some other media as well. And I think for us, we really wanted to say, well, what does that actually look like? What does it mean to come of age and actually grow up in this context where this digital stuff is happening before this physical stuff is happening? Because we know the tried and true story of, of growing up in an American high school that's kind of been true for a long time, and I think we're seeing some paradigm shifts there. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, for Mishka and myself as filmmakers, we s started talking about wanting to design a, a, a story like we talked about before that is specifically designed for the new consumption habit, which is so different than all other mediums of watching content on phones. And when we started talking about um, the sort of messaging behind the film, we sort of put ourselves in the shoes of, it, when we were teenagers, Instagram sort of got big right after we finished uh, high school. Um, but just to think about how much that would have affected our young lives, we felt a lot of responsibility to talk to young people and to understand this shift to sort of the last generation that didn't grow up 
in this quote unquote Gen Z digital age. And I, and I think even Gen Z is a kind of conf a vague term in a certain sense because really for us, Facebook happened halfway into high school. And that's different than the kids who Facebook already existed before high school. Mm -hmm. That's different for kids who were who, people who were in college when Facebook came out. These are all or like completely different, you know, coming of age contexts to come up in. And I think for us, we were just felt a lot of empathy for this new generation who's fully immersed yeah. and say, what does that look like and how are they navigating? And also, what are the universal truths that haven't changed? Like kids have crushes on each other. Kids want to make out. This is not news to anyone. And I think that for us, we wanted to also capture the timelessness so that older generations could understand that these are still kids going through the same thing. Yeah. I'll just say really quickly, you heard it straight from Mace, but I think one of the most interesting things about this project in particular has been the discrepancy of the response we've heard from uh, adults with teenage children and teenagers themselves. For a lot of adults, it's felt like a very cautionary tale, mm. but for teens, it, it's sort of, they just feel heard. Like this is just an authentic story of a relationship about a guy in high school uh, in this day and age. Yeah, that actually segues nicely into my question for Mace. I wanna go back to when you started and you said, you know, a lot of people who are out there in media who are making films, who are older, just fundamentally don't seem to understand um, people in your age group and how they interact with their technology. I'm wondering if you could tell us what some of the things that you see that make you kind of cringe or things that you're like, oh, you guys just don't get how that works. I mean, honestly, it's not, it's not, um, it's merely they just don't understand it. Like, I, I, can't, I couldn't make a film, an accurate film about the 70s. I never grew up in the 70s, you know? It's really just, um, it, like, it's being hip to things. And um, your, your question was some of the stuff that makes me cringe. I mean, honestly, it's, it's with these people that are trying to make coming-of-age films, and they don't have these aspects that make people uncomfortable or, oh, wow, like, this is what's really going on. I, like... Personally, everything that I believe in is just, you know, telling the truth. That's what my mom always taught me. So it's honestly just telling the truth. If you want to make an accurate film um, about um, whatever it is, if it's technology, you, you have to put the things that would make you cringe or make you uh, uncomfortable because that's the raw truth of it, you know, of any timepiece. And I really just think, like, I don't know. I, I feel like it's just sheltering when, when filmmakers like try to make stuff for a specific audience. Mm -hmm. I, I think you should just make it for everyone and for everyone to understand. I feel like that's how you just connect with people, you know, and that's why you know, I think this is, is beautiful. But I can't really give you any examples yeah. off the head. I'd have to sit here and think. Yeah. What, what's the pre predominant way that you interact with your friends? Um, through Instagram and FaceTime. Uh, I recently got off of Snapchat. I've had it deleted. I'm trying to stay off my phone as much as possible, you know, really soak in the moment in yeah. my <laughs> life, which goes by fast. That's what my grandma tells me. And hey, <laughs> it does. I mean, that's one of the things also, I think that really struck me about the film. I think when you watch TVs about, TV about teens, a lot of time they're texting. Um, and in this film, a lot of the conversation that was happening was actually on Instagram. And I think for people, that was actually kind of shocking. The idea that people aren't using this thing that's built into your phone that is meant for you to do this exact thing, send messages. Instead, it's all of these other different apps. Um, so I want to let the audience know that we are coming to you for questions in just about two minutes. I'm going to tell you to get your phones out again, <laughs> but I think you had instructions before. You can open up Slido and submit questions that way. I have one more question for our panel before we come to you for that. So, Mishka, you got into this a little bit and you talked about kind of what is fundamentally different and what is fundamentally the same about being a teenager. And there were some things, so I am in that group of folks who got to college basically a year after Facebook hit. And it, social media has radically changed my life, but I can't imagine how it would have changed my life if I were truly kind of in the thick of adolescence when it happened. Um, so there were moments on in this film where I was like, this is insane, I can't even imagine it. And yet there were other moments that really resonated with me as memories of my teenage years. So I'm wondering if each of you can talk to me about what the ways that you think technology has changed adolescence and the ways that you think it actually hasn't had any effect. I mean, I think, I think adolescence is, is 
for the most part, a, a universal experience. I mean, as humans, we haven't changed so much. I think that really it's just about the level of interaction and connectivity that I think was really what we were focused on is how how does the social the social adolescence and kind of the social group how has that changed and in a lot of ways kids are coming into things in an almost public way when they arrive in middle school and high school they're already carrying these public personas and i think that was a big that was a big thing that we wanted to understand yeah. Yeah, I feel the same way. I think, to be honest, it's a question I'm still wrapping my head around. It's a question I feel like uh, I may not never have a concrete answer about because I'm never going to have the teenage experience in this day and age. Um, and our attempt at the film was to start a dialogue and just examine it in the most objective way possible. But I have a similar feeling that the setting and the forum for sort of social communication has an, an impact. But uh, a lot of the experience of growing up is, is just universal and individual for each person. It's tough to answer that question because our film is definitely not PG. And I feel like some of the answers to that question are, I mean, it's a, it's a kind of a story about sexually coming of age in the context of social media as a young person. And so I think that there are a lot of universal truths there. And then there are a lot of ways that kids can access their sexuality or the sexuality of their classmates that has changed. Okay. And I think that that's, a, that's kind of a, what the film is centrally exploring. All right. I, I think cut my mic. They want to censor yeah. me. <laughs> okay. um, and also, if you want to see the entire film, it is available on Vimeo. So some of the answers to those questions will become clear when you see the whole thing. Which is going to be emailed to everybody at the panel. You'll have a link to the film. All right, so let's start with questions. And the first one is for you, Mace. How similar is your relationship to your phone, um, to your characters? What are some of the differences? So did you really resonate with how Jake uses his phone? Um, I mean, the differences, I can start off the bat. I mean, Jake doesn't, he has a good relationship with his mother. He doesn't really have a good father figure in his life. And I can see he finds sanctuary in his phone. He finds happiness. He finds relief in his phone because he doesn't really have anyone else to talk to. He feels like trapped. But when you're on social media, you have all of these, you know, different outlets you can express yourself through. So definitely, like, I... I before have found sanctuary in my phone, like some relief or, hey, I want to wind down and watch a video, but um, I, not as much. I would say I have a really close relationship with my family members so I can speak with them. But some of the similar things, um, I would say we both, social media affects my life. Um, my phone affects my life, sadly. Uh, I mean, I'm on Instagram and it's business. Sometimes I feel, you know, sometimes I used to feel like pressured if, oh, how many photos, uh, I just posted this photo, I hope it gets this many likes or, and I learned to not really care about that. But, you know, I used to be like that, like, wow, I really want my photo to get enough likes or like, oh, what if my fee doesn't look a certain way? Because, I mean, kids are critical on this. Like, it, it sometimes I feel like I have to fit in using my phone. And which kids do, like, there is, there is trends with Instagram that kids do, like, even with the font of your caption, like, there, and the aesthetic of it. I mean, those things, if you don't do it, then you're not, like, cool. And I know this sounds ridiculous, but I promise you it's, it's true, like, social media, a lot of kids let it get to them, and I feel like I, as a, you know, um, influencer, whatever you want to call it, or just as a kid, I want to speak out and just bring awareness, like, it doesn't, like, it's a totally different aspect of your life, which sadly, they're really just combining, and I feel like we, I can teach kids to learn how to use it in a good way and not let it affect their life as much and really just live it and use their phone when it's necessary, you know, because it is a big aspect of um, my generation's life, you know. I think that actually points us directly into the question of Elizabeth's question, which will be our final one and was one that I actually want to ask too. So wherever Elizabeth is, thank you for that. Mace seems to live his, or Mace's character seems to live his entire life through his cell phone. Is he addicted to his phone? Does the film represent a healthy relationship with technology? I think this is something we all talk about a lot. Mace, I'm actually going to start with you and go the other way. Do you think Jake is addicted to his phone? Yeah, I think he's addicted to his phone, but also I do think he finds comfort in his phone as well. It's not really uh, addiction. It is. I mean, sometimes I check my phone un unnecessarily, but 
I do think he finds sanctuary in it when... Is how he lives his life. Exactly. You can interact with your friends. If You can do anything on your phone and talk to anyone if you need any mental uh, you know, health issues. Yeah. If you have any, you can express yourself through that, which is amazing. But I don't really think he's necessarily addicted. He's addicted because he has no one else to talk to, you know, and he, f he really feels like he fits in through his phone. Yeah. Zach Mishka, do you think Jake's addicted? I think, I think yes, he's addicted to his phone, and I, but I think he's addicted to his phone in the same way that 95% of Americans are addicted to sugar. I mean, I think it's so much part of our culture, and it's so much an extension of ourselves as well. I think it's a question that you always have with technology, um, is that it's an extension of ourselves. And at some level, yes, is it addictive? But how, where do you define the line between something that is just part of yourself and something that is external that's an addiction? I think yeah. that always comes down to a framing of, is it negatively affecting you or positively affecting you? And I think for some people, it's an incredibly positive tool that is not having a negative effect on their life. It's empowering them. It's empowering people that, you know, look at what it can do for people with different abilities, you yeah. know? And, you know, I think that that's a huge thing as well. So it's not just a black and white issue. Zach, do you agree? Yeah, no, I mean, my, my, my feeling is the same. I think Jake is addicted to his phone. And I think uh, the experience that we wanted to portray is that that we've all had, that phones have become an extension of our lives in a way that for a lot of people has happened so quickly, we haven't had time to pause and examine it. Um, and so I, 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 I feel the same way. It's, it's not an addiction that's necessarily a negative thing or a positive thing. It's just a, a relationship we wanted to portray. Well, the film is so fascinating. I do hope you all will watch it. Please join me in thanking our panelists.